Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. As a special gift to every viewer on YouTube, there is a link in the description to apply for a free breakthrough trading strategy session with myself. What does that mean? Alex created a free trading course for beginners and at the end of it, we will be selecting a few non-members to get on the phone with myself, Tosh, T Bradley 90 to help with your trading. Click the link in the bio, watch the video and apply today. Now, while today is just a preview of the full length video, if you want to watch the full length or any of our exclusive content, then become a member of MIC. All right, so the webinar tonight is going to be on confidence. Uh, um, I think I have to move that over. Yeah, not the, I mean, it could be a lot worse. Definitely be a lot worse. You know, I mean, it's just quick ins, quick outs, and it's just like, I give up. Yeah, dude, that looks sick. All right, yeah, so today's webinar is going to be on confidence. And I think everybody struggles with this, so I think it's going to be a good one. All right, so let's let's get going. And hopefully the bear shows up um, about halfway through. I think he's doing something right now. But anyway, let's go. All right, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about confidence. Um, I'm gonna go over some key traders over the last week. <clears throat> Thankfully, more than the last couple of weeks, it's been great. Um, I'm gonna reflect on market sentiment as usual. The top, my topics today, I'm gonna talk about fallacies again because it's kind of a con uh, segment I wanna continue because there's just so many of them that we, that we uh, deal with every single day and it affects almost everybody. So I hope, I'm hoping it's, it'll be beneficial. Um, my favorite, I love talking about trading psychology. It's what I think is the most important part of the entire game. Then we're gonna finish with question and answer with the bear and, and, and go over kind of his process a little bit. And like he's, the, the, the bear is just like, I mean, like it's, it's just so amazing to see like he, he has the same setup every single time. It's all he does and it just, that's it, right? It's just like the ultimate discipline. So, all right, let's get to it. So uh, RC was one of these runners, and I think this was on its first day. I think this was its first day running when uh, I, I wanted to short it. And so, like like Joe and I were, uh, like Joe talked about in the in the in the webinar, I'm sorry, in the seminar at Philly. You know, like the idea that like 10:30 is kind of an area where longs don't want to be entering if it's at highs, and 10 and 10:30 is an area where shorts don't want to be entering if the stocks are at lows. Right. That's kind of based my idea around the around this 1030 a short for ARCI. Yeah, this was on the 26th, just like three days ago. Um, and like I, I, it started to get like really consolidated, really what I felt like was looked tired up here. So I decided to um, go ahead and start um, trying to form a position, thinking that thinking that um, that the top had been in. So I just started scaling in around here around the high day and I even got this epic nice stuff short like and this is kind of what I wanted I wanted it to pop over high day and stuff really hard and I ended up time slash price step stopping out like after it didn't just continue after a while I just ended up cutting it out and the one thing I could have done better is um and like the worst part about this is that I know this already like, like in the moment, I knew immediately that I probably should have covered sooner, but I didn't because um, I got a little bit stubborn. But the, it, Joe mentioned this in in the set, in the Philly um, webinar, and it's called edge decay, right? And edge decay is the perfect word for it. Like, it's something that I've known for a very long time, like what it is when I feel it, but I couldn't really uh, put words to it until now, until Joe did, and it's the perfect like, it's the perfect wording, edge decay. So basically when I got this final ad up here on this stuff, um, I was I was really like, I was, I was essentially really confident at that moment that like if this trade's gonna work, like here it goes. This is gonna be the time. Because, All right, so FFHL. So this is a stock, uh, I actually messaged Joe about this one. This one was a good one. Uh, FFHL, like I almost fell into this trap, dude. I like right at the start when this popped up, I was like, <laughs> I was digging in my heels, getting ready to, I'm going to add to this short. I'm going to, I'm going to go, 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 add, 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 add. Just, I'm going for this win. This is going to be a solid win if I just keep adding, right? And I was planning on, like, I was planning on scaling all the way to 550-ish, you know, like 556. I was, I was getting ready to scale up here. But 
uh, I don't know. I probably would have canned it here if I did. I would have lost patience with the fact that it didn't happen here. And that's just me knowing my patience level. I probably would have got it. But um, like, it, what's super cool is everybody in the room um, was like, why short this? Why short this? And I'm like, you know what? Yes. Why effing short this, right? Like, just why, why don't I just wait for something like this to happen before I short it? So that's what I did. And instead, because I did that, I was going to short and start in small and add, 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 strat. Um, start. Um, but because I didn't, I was able to actually go for a first bounce trade. And because I knew I did want to short it, I was innately kind of conservative with the exits. I'm totally, I'm totally fine with that decision because I did, you know, whenever I'm waiting to short something, if I am longing something, I know very well that I'm, I'm longing temporarily because I do want to short it eventually. So I, I'm like, I'll get the first bounce. I'm not going to expect it to break the high of day of $5 again. So I wanted to take most off um, before it, it got up to five. So you can see most of my cells here are under five for the lower high. And I did save a piece for over, and I didn't even save that much over. I, I kind of just had it at like 523 and it you know popped up and I got it. So there's a beautiful first bounce trade I got on it. And then like, here I am, I'm just waiting for it to break down, right? I, I see this, I see this low and I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for it to break this low um before i start shorting now now that this is kind of like the first significant low so we get up here and i'm just waiting for it and right here i i, I remember trying to get in a little bit better but i didn't get that great of a fill this time so i normally do better but i was a little slow but anyway i short here um I'm at, it's good it's important to note i'm willing to add as it pops back up here i'm expecting this kind of stuff so but we get an immediate tank and i cover i, I cover uh half of it here and i start adding in on the bounce and this is a good example of when I did realize my edge decay, right? I did realize my edge decay. This kind of trade, um, the fact that it put everybody, all the chasers over water, underwater over here, and it ignites all of the chaser shorts down here. I know that if I'm shorting up here and it's taking a significant amount of time, it's allowing everybody else who was slow like my edge on, on a breakdown trade should be that I short the breakdown and it tanks a lot into where I have kind of like an edged average. At this point, it's giving everybody else a chance to have the same average as me, right? This, these, kind of, in, these kind of tank and immediate bounce trades should be met with selling pressure um, pretty immediately as all these guys try to sell, right? Um, the next, uh, um, the other trade I had this week was OSN. And I did a video lesson on this. If, if you know, I'm gonna go over it again just in case anyone hasn't seen it. But when I, I don't always go long, but when I do, I go short. <laughs> um, so this was, I, I did make a video, so I'll, I'll go over fast, or I'll try to go fast on this one. But for if you haven't seen it, um, this is a classic washout long pattern for me. And you know how I talked about in a previous webinar, how I talked about there's a, oftentimes there's going to be some variation to setups. This is an example of kind of a variation. I wanted the tank to come in the first couple minutes of the day. That's normally how they happen. They're gonna happen in the first like one, two, three, four minutes of the day. Like it's gonna happen right here. I'm gonna get my washout, it's gonna come right back. This one did a little bit of a stutter first. So initially what I did actually, I had orders out on this stock um, to, to buy in the, in the 40s and 50s down here. If it was gonna tank right away out of the open, that's where I had my orders, right? But when it consolidated a little bit, I actually said that I canceled my orders. I canceled my orders because I felt like it was going to start grinding down. And I didn't want it to grind down on me. I wanted parabolic, emotional, downside, panic type selling. And I eventually put the orders back when I saw, you know, when I saw a massive flush. I'm like, okay, that's what I want. I want the massive flush, especially it's right here near my support level. And a lot of people started to... Oh, not a lot, but a couple people messaged me and asked me, like, you bought under the death line. Like, why did you do that? Right? Like this being the death line. And to me, this is an example of an empty death line, right? First of all, at the open, I always expect volatility and I always expect emotional volatility to where, and I don't always place a whole lot of meaning behind the price action at the open, because a lot of times it's just literally random cluster fucks, candles going up and down. Right, so I don't like to put a lot of emphasis or reasoning behind opening candles. Like if 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 a stock breaks 
high a day in the first candle, that doesn't mean like it's a breakout for me, like especially in the first candle, the first couple candles, right? So I have that kind of um, desensitization, what I talked about in Philly. I have that kind of desensitization about the open. And the other part, you know, so that's what makes me feel it's like an empty death line. It's just opening noise. The other reason why I think it's an empty death line is um, who's long? Right, like think about the way this this kind of gapped up and re and and pushed up on low volume. Right, pre market there's always low volume in relation to the market, and it kind of fell down. And I would bet that this isn't on. Look at the volume. It's not necessarily on high volume. Right, like it's not like longs are super selling. It's probably like if you've ever seen pre market action. Pre market action. There's two ways stocks can go down. Right, bids can get chewed or bids can drop. Right, so. Just because a stock fell harshly from highs doesn't necessarily mean a whole bunch of people are underwater. It just means that the, the bids, the, the asks could have been elevated and the bids could have uh, dropped where not a whole lot of volume was actually behind the move. And that's kind of most pre-market action. So when we're down here at the lows, it's, it's kind of trading on illiquidity right here. We pop up at the open. And so, um, okay, so those are I think were the key trades that I did this week that were worth talking about. Um, uh, so the market participants were um, uh, kind of, I, I think, less than last week, but uh, definitely better than the last couple of weeks. And we still have some momentum going on, right? We had some good ones, ARCI, RKDA, and LCI. They all carried the momentum forward. And they're still kind of chugging, keeping the market alive a little bit. But I think what one thing we saw from last week is a little bit decay in the overzealousness in the stocks. Like, right, when we come off of a dead market into the bull market, it right like everything is goes absurd right but then we start to be used to it and I, you slowly see it taper off but i think th these are kind of carrying the momentum still leaving it still giving buyers the 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 positive enforcement they have to keep buying stocks um currently like not everything is just slamming normally so now what i'm on the lookout is these hints right osn totally failed right leds totally failed oh the other one kbsf kbsf I, I forgot to put it in here. KBSF totally failed. DPW totally failed. You know, like MTC had that that fail. These are kind of hints that Momo's starting to run out. And I think like we'll probably get one that starts to run and it like offers or something. And that'll probably be the killer, right? That 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 shuts down the the the, the overzealous buying market. Uh, give me a second. Echo. Hawaii, man, it gets hot. Okay. Um, and I was, uh, you know, DPW and Mara kind of had its thing. And I was actually a little disappointed that Bitcoin didn't gain any steam. I think the market does better when there's a fad because then sympathy market, like sympathy runners can tag on and be like, oh yeah, well, we're Bitcoin too. Like just put out a cryptocurrency, something in their PR. If DPW, if DPW is, um, is going nuts, then like Bitcoin is crazy in small cap land. All any company has to do is like put out, oh yeah, we're thinking about getting into uh, cryptocurrency and like they'll be up 50% if it's a low flow. Um, don't worry, oh like it's recorded. Oh gosh, I hope so. Uh, I, I just gotta check, yeah, okay. You know, but the good news is in, uh, yeah, blockchain, blockchain overreaction, right? But uh, some, some more positive is, one thing I, I'm liking to see is that the market seems to be shaking off Trump tweets. Like Trump's tweet, like Trump had a huge tweet, a rant on China the other day. Oh yeah, we yeah we are no longer a tea company. We 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 are uh, long long blockchain. Yeah, and SPU Sky People Fruit Juice went to like a FTFT tech company because of it. But um, yeah, the market seems to be shaking off Trump tweets. Like he just had this big rant on China and it really tanked the market, but the market recovered, right? And like, I feel like the market's starting to get a little desensitized to Trump tweeting, which is really good. I like, it's really annoying for large cap traders um, when, you're, when you're in a stock and all of a sudden it just tanks because a spy takes a dump. Like it really just messes up your, your trading and you gotta be like, do I ignore this? Is it gonna recover like it's starting to? Or do I have to sell? Like. It's getting really annoying, but I'm starting to see a little bit of um, less reaction each time. Like the the like the, the tank. Like there was one today, it tanked, but it quickly recovered. Right? Like, no, you don't. No, you don't. Like not at all. Like the mark, the, 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 the totally irrelevant. Right? Or this is this is one that I find myself falling for a lot. Like 
I'm only asking, and I still fall for this one, I'm only asking for one pull, 10 cents, or I'm just looking for a little bit of profit. My cover is literally right there. It's literally right there. Like, I'm gonna make eight cents on this trade. Can I just make eight cents? Like, it's all I'm asking for. I should be able to get this. Like, if a stock is trending, there is zero, like, obligation for the stock to pull and get you out, right? Because long, like, you know, long traders that are keeping the trend aren't going to sell until that level breaks, right? They're not selling until that level breaks. Like, they don't want to be forced to sell. Like, this is how trends work. But you think that, you, like, you're, you're waiting for that one pull, that one pull that's going to give you that little bit of profit. And because you're only seeking a little bit, you feel like you deserve it, that you're entitled to that profit. And that's just, that's just a fallacy, right? It doesn't, that's not the, like, and if you cling to these, you're going to get like toxic, you're gonna to get desperate, and it's gonna really affect your mentality, right? Another one, my last three shorts didn't work, so this one's definitely gotta work, right? Like, this is the gambler's fallacy, right? Like, you know, 50% heads and tails, and you flip a coin, like, if you flip it 99 times and it's heads, the next time's probably gonna be tails. Like, no. It can, it, each time is each trade is so individual, like no trade matters before your trade. You have to go into every single trade pretending it's the first trade you ever took because the market doesn't care, right? Market doesn't care if it's, if the last three trades were losers, because for all the market knows your last three trades could have been winners, right? But we get into this toxic thinking where we feel like we deserve and we're entitled for whatever reason or not. You know, another one, I always pay for chasing. Every time I chase, I lose. This, this time should be the time where I win, right? This time should be the time where I win by chasing because I see chasing working for everybody else, but not me. And I always lose. So I'm pro if I watch me not trade, watch me not chase this time and have it work. I'm not going to. No, there isn't. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cause, cause I couldn't hear you. So I wanted to switch my speakers. So, but I didn't want them to overhear it from the mic. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, man. So, so, so like, and, and yeah, I wanted to bring you on just because it just seems like such a, a good risk reward setup, a good high probability. So can you walk it through one more time? Like what, what is your, like, what's your favorite thing to see on these gappers? Yeah. Shorts that you do? yeah, exactly. So first thing I look for the daily chart. I want to see like when they gap up, like the, uh, before, like in history, when they gap and they fade all day. So I want to see like these big red candles on the daily when there's volume so when they gap and then they fade all day and okay. then i have like a checklist i have a checklist for the criteria so i'm looking for the flow to be over like three four million market cap over 10 15 million and low uh, institutional ownership and the short flow so yeah the io i prefer to be less than 30 percent the short float less than 20 percent 30 percent and I just wait. I want I want the gap to be uh, to open like over thirty percent, so we could have some. If it fades, like there's some meat on it, and right. they draw the line. Same, so same what Joe like explained it for the deadline. That's why I used to do like it's been now almost a year. And they wait like when they confirm the breakdown, the deadline. And I just short man. And if it's close to the view up, they use view up as a guide, uh, as a risk. So yeah. And yeah, man, uh, that's the thing. So I, I try my best to stick like only for the confirmation, like for the backside confirmation. I don't want to short the front side unless like there's a heavy, heavy resistance. Okay. On the push. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, so. I, I, I think um, you said something you, like you, you trade off five minute candles. Yeah, exactly. I trade five minutes. Yeah. I used to trade the one minute like two years ago when I started trading. Like now it's been like almost three years. But yeah, I f and then I change it to the five minute. I found it like I can hold longer. It gives me the more patience, like to hold longer because you know the one minute can fake you out and yeah, yeah. And, and like, even like on, on these breakdowns, like the deadline, if you use the five minute, it's much clearer than the one minute because in the one minute you can get fake it very easily. So yeah, in the five minute, it's much better, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, and like, um. Like, yeah, I noticed that like all of your charts are five minute and like, so, so do you technically, do you wait for the candle to close before like you like, is that your confirmation? Like, 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I w- uh, yeah. I want to see a hard stop, like under. For example, today, uh, ARCI it was a little bit tricky. I didn't trade it because actually I didn't locate it. The, the locate was very high, like I think point one seven something. Yeah. So yeah, uh, for example, like this one, because it, uh, and the problem is with the SSR and the low float. So for example, we have like the the support at five eighty, right? Five nineteen eighteen. Right. Uh, the ideal, the ideal, like the ideal and uh, setup for this one is a wait for the open and then it stops that level. So, but the, the problem here, it happens pretty much. It happens around. Let me check. It happened around 9:20, right? 9:20 Eastern time. And then you can see, like after the open, uh, it pushed like over that level and then it stopped. So that candle, like at 9:45, that's the best. Like if you can see, like it closed under and then you can short all pops using view one that's basically okay. what i'm doing so so the best case scenario the, the breakout happened after 9 30 not the pre month that's the right point. right right yeah because i i'm looking at this chart and i know you'd be right <laughs> you would be right there exactly like, I, yeah. Yeah. I just know uh, that's bear's entry <laughs> yeah, know. Man, but the thing is but the problem with the arci the the odds get slower. I mean, the, because it's the same pattern, but there's different winning uh, percentage, I think. Because, uh, uh, because of the SSR, I mean, like, and the low float, if it's a nano float, it's changed. You see what I mean? But the ideal setup for this one is the same thing, but uh, the float could be, like, over 4 million, 5 million without an SSR. You see what I mean, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, SSR. Like, SSR makes my trades better, right? Oh, that's a, I forgot to mention that on OSN. The SSR was on. But uh, yeah, like SSR makes longs better. So, I mean, it should normally just make shorts sure crappier. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, and yeah, so um, you guys can be free to ask questions if you guys want. Um, and we'll, and we'll just go. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you got, and we'll get to them as you go. <laughs> as, or as, as, as we're talking. Um, but today, man, I really messed it up, man. In LCI, I don't know what happened, man. I traded day two, like <laughs> on the gap down. <laughs> I was just gonna get red to green. I don't know what happened. Uh, I totally lost all the discipline. Actually, uh, I've been like trading very well the past two weeks. I made only maybe around five trades, I think. It's the same exact setup. And today, yeah, man, uh, I just didn't locate ARCI. <laughs> I found myself trading LCI. So. Of course, that's always the way it works, man. Yeah, man. Sometimes we that's lose discipline. We pay for it. Though. But yeah, like this one was just, I mean, this just didn't give a relief. I mean, you and Joe got out at like prime times because this could have been bad. Exactly. Just that ad, 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 like here's the dip, you're, everyone wants it, and then it just comes and like, <laughs> just... anyway, Ooh, so for, man, yeah, yeah. Brandon has a good question. Do you stop looking for death line plays after 1030? It depends because after 1030, it's going to be a different like setup. Okay, which is, I think you talked about it in one of your webinars, which is the best the one day fade late day after two o'clock, right? Right. Yeah. So if, uh, if, if it starts making new high and then it's consolidating, uh, that's the, the new deadline. And then you can short it after 2 p.m. Yeah, it works. It works. Yeah, well. yeah. That's a, different, that's a different story. Yeah. That's a different story because the best ones, like, I mean, if it's going to be an all day fader, like it fades all day, it's going to happen before 10 p.m. Because, it, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's gonna happen for ten thirty for sure. Yeah, normally. But, yeah, yeah. After ten thirty, it's totally different uh, pattern. I mean, it's uh, it's the the one you you like it. It's the one they fade late day after two p.m. It works hundred percent. It works. Yeah, all, all the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The uh, no, yeah. not hundred percent, but I mean, yeah, it works. I mean, <laughs> after two p.m. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so yeah, I think that's what we're. I agree too. Like, I don't think deadlines really happen much, in, especially if they do like rip up in the middle of the day. I think the chances of those um, fading, like I think the chances just um, just dwindle down to like, uh, like when they break high a day from the morning and there's a yeah. new death line, like the all day fade almost goes away. And that, that 2 p.m. crack is like, I, I've become kind of like a piker on that crack instead of even looking for the fade there because like they just have been holding lately. Not even like, like if the death line doesn't like, totally happen like a volume death line in the morning i don't think they're gonna pay two yeah 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 you gotta wait till two to even attempt it again so 
Yeah, basically, actually, for me, like uh, on this uh, specific like setup, like uh, if it's gonna uh, if it's gonna break down, I mean, like by nine uh, nine uh, nine nine thirty, you can know if it's gonna happen. You see what I mean, right? The the pre market chart will be like formed, like full, like, and you can see where the support is, where the deadline is, and then so to I mean for for the new guys, if you want to avoid like to know and then you can leave like a computer so you don't make anything you can know like by 9 a.m i think 9 30 you can see the the pre market chart. for example arci it was clear like it was clear the support where's the support but some of the charts they are not like really really clean you see what i mean right they keep, uh, yeah exactly yeah so sometimes if you see me like i leave by 9 15 like before the market even opens i just shut down my desk and i leave yeah, just to avoid and, yeah, otherwise you're just gonna lose. You're just gonna lose money if you stay like all all the time. Exactly. Yeah. So then, hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley ninety in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC joining MIC, maybe you're a member already. You have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media. You can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T-O-S-H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.